We'll move on to the first panel session of the day. While yesterday's session was more about architects and architecture, for today we zoom out and we talk more about architecture and the city. In an interplay between the built environment and the open spaces, there's constantly an urban and rural surrounding that is responding to them. Uh, as we progressively put forth smart city plans, master plans and other grand ambitions for our cities, we have much to learn and unlearn and along with it comes in a, we come as agents of change. In this edition, we hope to provide a platform for equipping ourselves with different perspectives of the city and make the principal step in our contribution to the place we live in. So for our first panel, titled Spirit of Chennai, Holding on to the Innate Madrasness, may I invite architect Shujata Shankar, Ms. Nalini Thakur, and the moderators, architect Kavita Selvaraj and architect Kurian George on the stage, please. Architect Nalini Madhav Thakur is a retired professor from School of Architecture and Planning, Delhi. She's a pioneer in teaching architecture conservation and has spent the last 50 years as a professional in Delhi. Architect Surjata Shankar is an architect by profession with a deep passion for heritage. She has directed two documentaries on Madras and designed a heritage map of the city. In her 40 years of practice, she has handled projects in architecture, interiors and planning. She has been the recipient of the prestigious National Award for Excellence in Design. Um, architect Sujata has co-authored a book, Madras Inked Impressions of an Artist and Architect with artist Manohar Devadas. Architect Kavita Salvaraj will be a moderator on today's panel, is the founder of CityWorks, a public space design social enterprise. A graduate from the Harvard University, architect Kavita has straddled the world of mainstream architectural practice along with a deep interest and passion for the quality of environmental cities. She is also a partner at Trilog Studio where she is a principal architect. She also teaches in various prestigious institutions across the city including uh, IIT Madras and Anna University. Thank you so much, Srinidhi, for the introductions. A great pleasure for me to start off the second day. I think when uh, Korean and I talked about uh, the agenda for today, uh, the idea that we move from looking at the city as a series of buildings, but looking at it as a whole uh, is a very nice way to sort of zoom out. And uh, what better way to start this conversation than looking at where we came from. So on the stage with me, of course, is uh, architect Sujata and architect Nalini, who need uh, no introduction, uh, because they've been in the space of uh, looking at the city as a continuum uh, in all their uh, career, both professionally and as uh, educators. So uh, I think we can really get some insights about where we came from and perhaps think about how we should go forward. So I thought I'd, I'd structure this conversation in three parts. Uh, first, we'll just talk about your different perspectives on the past, what heritage means, and your personal journeys. And then maybe uh, dwell a little bit on current practices, uh, how things are going, and with possibly some suggestions and ideas uh, from your side on what we could do from our side as a design community to move towards a better uh, city. So if I can just start with you, uh, uh, architect Sujata, uh, how would you uh, describe the architectural character of uh, Chennai specifically and your interpretation and understanding of what it means uh, to really understand the heritage of a city? Heritage is uh, something that's evolved over time, wherever it may be, Chennai or otherwise. And it's a layer of history and a layer in the development of the city. It also creates an identity and this is what people sort of, you know, take as memories of the city and it helps to connect to their roots, these memories. And, uh, you know, if you think of Chennai, you have all the beautiful buildings along the marina, the university buildings that have spanned more than a century, but are, you know, sort of uh, sensitive to each other. And they've been built in a manner that you hardly feel that they are of different genres, although they are. 
there's there's an art deco period there's a, there's a colonial period there's an indo saracenic period there's a period even before that all of which sort of seamlessly integrate together and this is what the marina promenade has similarly if you look at uh, you know the railway station area in on punamali high road you have three four important buildings on the northern side of which central station is one then ripon building victoria public hall and the uh, southern railway headquarters all of them sort of align up in a you know uh, making a great gesture of urban design to the street so all of these put together make what the city is i mean there are beautiful heritage precincts i'm just mentioning these because you mentioned madras and this is madras week when the entire city bursts into celebration of everything that's madras and madrasness as korean calls it so there are heritage precincts like the high court the egmo museum these are all world class precincts and uh, also the fort st george if any of you haven't been to any of these i'd encourage you to spend at least a few hours in all these spaces to sort of you know get a feel of what the city is all about so in terms of as architects we always think of architecture as built heritage that's what hits us first and some of these examples are what chennai is all about when you think of new york you think of the skyline of new york or the statue of liberty you think of paris you think of the eiffel tower or egypt then it's the pyramids these are always the case that you know the built heritage comes to mind as instant recollections when you think of a place so natural heritage is also another aspect of heritage um it's not only built heritage that makes for our foundations of culture and history so natural heritage in if you take madras you have the abc waterways the adyar the buckingham canal and the kuam you have the beautiful beaches marina and some of the other beaches in the city and if you ever took a flight over Uh, you know the su southern part of the city the green that you see below would make you think and wonder whether this is really madras or you're flying over a forest you have from the estuary onwards you have the theosophical society you have iit then you have the gindi park then you have the raj bhavan all of which form such a green continuum and you have the wetlands of uh, palikarne you have uh, the wetlands other wetlands in the city all of which contribute to being our heritage so it's not only built heritage that makes for heritage and for people to connect to what the place is all about and the other aspect is which has been recently recognized as heritage is intangible heritage of course this encompasses a wide spectrum of issues but for for the moment for our interest for what is part of the built her, built heritage uh, intangible parts would be you know the crafts and the skills that went into making these buildings if you take any building uh, if you take in chennai you can think about the uh, madras terrace which you know requires a particular skill to do it which over a period of time has declined so uh, sad to say similarly jack arches which are beautiful um, you know form to the roof and then you have the walls which are plastered in lime you have the red oxide floors you have metal work you have so many other aspects of craft and skills uh, which have all gone into the building it's these craftsmen and their hands and what has worked on this which are all also part of heritage so if we respect all of these and you know take this forward that would be a great way to move forward and uh, 
you know it is about balancing balancing as we move forward and recognizing these you know icons of the past that we have to take it forward thank you so much that's so well put the idea that our heritage not only encompasses the the built characteristics but also natural and the intangible i just i just love that description and if i can add one more uh, sort of intangible heritage to chennai i think it's uh, really the festivals and the and the seasons like the uh, you know certain events that really mark our our uh, city and which people come from all over uh, the world could be like having the golu dolls in mylapur street or the december or the sabha concept so those are all i guess yeah all those add. it's a wide spectrum if you look at intangible heritage yes you have folk art music oral traditions exactly. storytelling right. a whole lot of it tribal art True. much of it but i just restricted it to what yeah. was relevant for built oh. heritage that's uh, that's really fantastic uh, way of looking at it i'll uh, shift my next question uh, to you uh, architect nalini uh you've spent a lifetime as an architect and an educator uh but your roots are very much in uh, in chennai and now you're back to living in uh, chennai as a city could you talk a little bit about sort of your perspective of what the city has been to you and how your uh, journey in conservation uh, has influenced your thinking about the city as you've come back to chennai yeah Yeah, thank you, Th- thank you, Kavita, and uh, thank you, Korean and Sujata, for getting me here on this uh, architects, con- you know, celebration. It's more than thirty years since I went to any architects, you know, uh, kind of uh, conferences, and I, you know, and I think it was eighty-eight last time in Goa that I went, you know, and I spoke about Shah Jahan as a architect and builder, you know, because. that was my uh, you know and i was really happy there because the architects listened to it and i didn't expect it but i knew i had to go and say it you know so thank you it's coming back again so uh, you know i thought a little bit about this uh, together towards t- tomorrow and i was wondering well, are we what will come into this is it only madras because that's what i was when i came back Uh, back to madras after 50 years you know i was always you know have that nostalgia and the sentimentality about madras and what it was and then uh, now i'm thinking more or is it uh, you know is it only chennai the madras that's transformed into something quite contemporary or this old fashioned madras so what is it that's going to take us together tomorrow so the conclusion i've come to is that it's both because i think it's very important that they are both equally important in very different ways and if we see them together it is really i mean it, it's much better so that's one thing and uh, and again uh, what i say i'm going to talk about uh, this whole thing from a very personal perspective uh, because i do still feel i belong to madras because i spent quite a, my some quite a considerable schooling you know here and and i've studied in many schools in madras also and so i know many areas because i used to had to take the bus go around you know so like that i had a uh, you know and you know as a young teenager about what is madras and uh, but uh, you know so and then for i went to delhi you know the thing is i went to study college in delhi and after that i stayed back there teaching in the school you know so and i spent uh, totally 50 years and i've come back so what really now i i mean with this covid i've been around for some time i was not able to do much because i was very confused madras chennai what should i do you know and finally being a conservator of architecture i have to think of the future you know and we are and, and i am another kind of architect also you know so uh, so only now i started thinking of how to act on this you know so 
I might try to share something about the approach I'm trying to do so that we can see the entire, uh, you know, Madras. I'm not talking about Chennai now because I think the modern places need another, you know. And uh, what is the basic steps for looking at it, okay? And, uh, <coughs> uh, you know, let me tell you in Delhi, I can tell you, Delhi, I can one tell you that Delhi is much more beautiful than Madras. And I think that is something that is very, I was lucky that I had gone to Delhi at that point because it had so many, you know, imperial, it was so many imperial capitals. It has so many, uh, you know, people had made it their, uh, you know, their city. And it was, it was very dramatic and it was very obvious, especially when, you know, when I studied, you know, when I started studying, it was really so easy to see. I don't think you can see it today so well. So I spent a lot of time and really a city, uh, any city, it is not just Delhi, is very immersive when you start engaging in it and getting interested in it, as, especially the architecture. I, I really felt that all these things were not taught in the classes and I was very bored in the classes. So I was exploring parts of Delhi during those days. And by the end of the, you know, my time in, uh, you know, when I finished, my head of the department told me that, you know, you can be a good tour guide here, you know. That is because I was not very serious as a student at, uh, throughout. And I was more interested in other things. So now, you know, then I got, uh, I actually became a conservator by and got into the specialization of, uh, you know, conservation. And you know, one has to understand that the subject when I started was a new one. So there was nobody to tell me what to do. So I had to build it up myself. So I have a lot of theories and I have a lot of different uh, diagrams and I, I have, I'm quite self-sufficient at every level of that subject, you know. And I, so uh, when I have to talk about something technical, I'll come to that and all that. Today I will talk about a very broad overall way of working. Yeah, when, uh, when I came back, you know, it, it was when I told you, I just want to give you a few things about, uh, you know, when <coughs> because Chennai is a totally different place from the one I left earlier. It's, there is no comparison, actually. You know, it's really quite uh, dramatic, this change. And I couldn't even, you can't even believe it, you know. And, uh, but I must tell you that, uh, you know, also I knew that when I was, uh, you know, in Madras, People were very intelligent, but quiet. They understood, but they never talked too much, which is very different in Delhi, you know. They, they keep, but they, are, they understand. So, and, uh, <coughs> you know, I remember that uh, Vallavar, Vallavar Kotam was being constructed, you know, and we were all sort of grumbling about why are they doing. But uh, now to think of it, I think uh, understanding architecture has become quite broad. And I think it's about time we try to understand what is it they are trying to do with that kind. We cannot be uh, in a narrow, we cannot be narrow-minded about architecture because we are talking of a, uh, you know, a democratic country. Uh, different kinds of people will be there who will have the authority, the power to do things. They might not be the top best, but they also have some ideas which you may not agree. And so you have to have a different uh, way of looking at it and be much more tol tolerant. And I remember that, uh, you know, LIC building was the only tall building on Mount Road. It was really a kind of landmark, you know, and it sort of, you know, stood there. So that was, and, uh, <coughs> and so that's what I think it's, one doesn't go into too much of, uh, you know, criticism, but what one can do is uh, try to, uh, find ways of uh, studying, researching, and understanding architecture. Because I think that field is rather poor in this country. Because when it comes to architecture, that uh, you know, every building is standing in front of you, but I can tell you no one knows how to describe it. This is what I tell the stu ask the students to do, it, they can't. And if you think you know something and you like, I think the least you, you should be able to describe it. In order to describe it, you need to know much more about it. 
that is your problem so and that knowing much more has to be done in a structured way Absolutely. and that is what i am saying that you do have to uh, you know uh, find develop these structured ways of understanding and i call that the knowledge systems approach you know that is uh, and i and i uh, imagine it is actually what is it called an alternative to the western way of uh, describing architecture which we have learnt in our schools which was very visual and very limited and whatever one fancied which that is not what a building is you know so and then of course uh, you know seeing many nice old places you know uh, like mylapur where a lot of uh, you know demolition of housing has taken place which has left some gaps or some ugly you know infills and you have it is a, it is a loss uh, you know that is also what you saw as soon as you came and you sort of felt you know why am i you know why is it like this then chennai <coughs> and then chennai is actually larger than madras with all the growth and development you know and the only problem i really have with it is the so called uh, what is this main roads and then you have what is it called uh, transportation mrt huh? no no you uh, now you plan transportation planning you have one long road and you put all the facilities along it like an it corridor yeah transport uh, corridor some transport corridor they have a name something cor- you know it is got a transit corridor transit development. oriented development i think that has done a lot of harm because it has uh, you know it has separated the students and the youth who go to schools and colleges because many of them have to travel across the city and waste about hours you know trying to travel through these rather you know busy roads which is should not i think that is where one should be thinking about you know that uh, and how to change and maybe uh, re adapting old parts of the city could be a good way to bring in your colleges and uh, teaching and all that kind of uh, you know uses into that awesome yeah i i was just thinking that and then uh, and i was very disappointed with the museum complex egmore museum you know you know in it was one of a great favorite places when you are a child you are taken there and you see it and you might have gone to the you know theater and you saw the art gallery which i don't know what is going on for the last 20 years there you know so and and, and the and you know here i want to bring out two points you know this madras museum and all those buildings all designed by henry irwin who also designed the simla lodge you know what is that rajapati lodge viceregal yeah lodge. viceregal lodge which was done quite differently there and here these three buildings are very carefully using different kinds of revivals one is a ca- classical the theater then that one is indo saracenic the uh, the art gallery and here is a elizabethan tudor revival in the conimara so, library lovely. and i think you know we really need to think about architecture more Good. and why is it being left behind let's address so, this let's yeah. address okay. this right. now um what we've clearly established here that's architect sujata and architect nalini thakur have both clearly established chennai to have a reasonable heritage there is uh there are also these lovely temples that we have uh there are these temple environments that we have um there is the culture around it there is the the historic or the the heritage if you want wish uh to say uh these buildings that stand testimony to a time you know probably a colonial time uh yes uh but certainly all these like you said compose or comprise the memory of a place right now madras is also a place which is uh a destination for a lot of people now we have i'm sure the kind of i'm not aware of the exact number but the kind of uh migration towards madras is very very high 
this is not only migration from the rural environment but also migration from other metropolises because madras is seen as a place or chennai is seen as a place which uh, has a potential which none of these other places have although uh, nalini does say that there is more beauty in delhi delhi has the mughal uh, history it has history from various places now what is the importance the question that i would have for a very quick probably a single line answer or a two line answer because we are running short of time is uh, what is the importance of memory and how and how do you uh, argue for its uh, being sustained in the face of uh, economic uh, requirements or space requirements of a place that is growing as quickly as a, a place like chennai i would also build another question because uh, uh, yeah right after this so if you have if you are going to keep it brief then i would be able to put another question or this or else this would be the last question yeah <laughs> i can't promise it will be brief but uh, basically you know there's there's a lot of erosion of what one would call heritage over time there's a lot of excitement and engagement with you know progress development but it does not engage with heritage in that path of development that is where the problem lies uh, you spoke about the infills in mylapore and the heritage precincts or the temple districts etc etc we've had history not of just yesterday or the colonial times but we've got right from the paleolithic period we've got uh, you know uh, sort of uh, discoveries that have shown that man has inhabited this region of madras for 1 and 1/2 million years so it's not yesterday or today but in recent memory memory as you can call it we have the temples of mahabalipuram which have now shot into prominence after modi's visit or after the chess tournament if not for tourists and then you have uh, the temples of uh, mylapore and triplicane which have retained to some extent the traditional fabric and uh, george town and these kind of areas and then you have santom which has a portuguese flavor you have the a lot of influence of the british all over the city whether it's the white colonial buildings or subsequently later the indo-saracenic buildings starting from the chepok palace which is said to be the very first indo-saracenic building anywhere in india 100 years before senate house was built so we have all these icons that robert chisholm and henry irwin left behind which some of which nalini mentioned so all of these are cheek by jowl with whatever is now being developed so the idea is to balance these and i just read out a quotation from icomos unesco's uh, quotation where it says our generation has inherited a wealth of tangible and intangible cultural resources that embody the collective memory of communities across the world and buttress their sense of identity in times of uncertainty held in trust for human kind these resources are essentially non renewable clearly we must act as custodians of this fragile wealth by shouldering our share of responsibility to pass it on to future generations i thought this was just relevant and basically life itself is a collage in time you know there's no strict line between when the past ends and when the future begins and nor is there a definition of what the future is so the idea is to you know preserve the past integrate it with the present and make it a framework for development in the future very well said very very well said i do you want yeah. me to frame the question again to you the importance no. of memory which she I has amply 
to add to what your reaction, you know, <laughs> about Delhi. No, that's, I just want to, you know, answer <laughs> that. Well, let's, uh, you know, uh, Delhi is on the tentative list to World Heritage. True, true, Okay, true. and I, it I was, not, and I'm it was a great atelier for learning for me. So, the next point I really want to introduce is, how do we, how do we get Madras to get somewhere like that? You know, how uh, moment, Madras uh, and uh, think moment, together. my question, at uh, this moment, my question is not about how we would get Madras there, uh, but the memory. But we have a room full of people who are going to shape the future of Madras or the future of various cities, towns and villages which have similar considerations like heritage, uh, environment, ecology. These are not probably something that would give you a profit return on the immediate. Uh, it's not something that would return profit instantly. But then there is a sort of value which is beyond a financial, monetary or uh, immediate value uh, that you, you have to ascribe to this like uh, Sujata read, just read about Ekamosa's statement and how she sort of paraphrased that statement herself. So it was amply stated there. But I would like to know from you if you have an additional statement on the importance of memory to a place. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think, you know, I have a, a method which I use. I don't use all these tags that are done, used by everybody. But, but for me, what is important is that everything has to be explained explicitly to everybody. Very Unless nice. you do that, and then it's per person what goes into their head and what is their memory. And then we are also talking about through, are we able to make a sort of within parameters about uh, in a kind of memory, I don't know. But that is comes from them. So what we do as a, has to be very action oriented and explicit. Because otherwise, you, when you are talking to so many people, the amount of contradictions and not uh, understanding or misunderstanding will be more. Yeah. And that is the problem that you have today. Yeah. And we are all talking this for the last 40 years, but we are not getting the results. So I think it's important to figure out the system in which this has to be, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, given. Yeah. To people, if I and can, if yeah. I can just well yeah, it's very yeah. well said. If I can just paraphrase uh, uh, what what you said in, in your earlier comment as well, is that what is missing in our understanding of the architectural fabric of our city is a clear knowledge base which characterizes different kinds of buildings that are there, and that awareness of what exactly it is that we have. I think a lot of there are a lot of uh, uh, faculty here from schools of architecture and one of the things that uh, happens is that the history is taught as in, in a very general way starting from Roman and Gothic and Romanesque and, and all of that and we are not sometimes able to translate what we see in our everyday lives in our immediate surroundings and be able to articulate what this represents, which is the time it came from, and have the actual vocabulary to have a conversation about it. I think I think what's missing yeah. is local history is never taught. Exactly. We don't know what's in our backyard. How many of us know that we were ruled by the French for three years? Right. You know, we only think of the British colonial history. We just completely miss right. so many other influences that we've had, you know, starting from the Portuguese. We've had the Danes, we've had the Dutch. We've had the French, we've had the, even the Americans, not ruling us, but the influences that have come in. We've had the French fighting the British on this soil. Yes. You know, the, an, an the entire... The Battle of Adyar. Yes, yes. The entire space where the high courts are constructed were cleared so that they could fire cannons across from Fort St. George to Blacktown. So, with this, I think I am actually yes. running short of time, but please remember that there is something called madrasness or, or there is this heritage that Chennai has and 
likewise every other city i don't need to tell you this but and you know about it but i'm just stating a well known fact that there is this history and we i get to see buildings that are left idle waiting for it to sort of fall off by itself or a fire is caused for some reason a fire happens and then the building cannot be left there by itself anymore and then you you build a new building in its place now instead of having to bring down buildings can we actually look at how build old heritage buildings of ours which which sort of ingrained the memory of a place can be sort of integrated with the new how do we build more but retain our memories Could this is what i would say and additionally both architect sujata and architect nalini who are uh, professor nalini has spent a lifetime in conservation and preservation and uh, both of them are available to us to speak more in detail uh, i would have to just, close this session after a one, after yeah. a line from sujata yeah. i just wanted to say that you know nowadays we talk about green there's you know adaptive reuse or using a building for new purposes keeping it going is and extending its life there's nothing greener than that absolutely because if there is structural stability in a building and if its life can be extended all you've got to do is open and close windows the buildings need to breathe the way you and i do and just keep the terraces clean and free of water ingress and the life is extended one great example in madras coming back to madrasness is the clive house inside fort st george which is where robert clive lived with his new bride after getting married within fort st george and then his son edward clive used it for entertainment before he built the banqueting hall which is now called raja ji hall and then the same building was a town hall the same building was the admiralty courts it was the accountant general's office and today it's the it houses the offices of the archaeological survey of india and it's just built of lime and brick like many of our heritage buildings are and if this building can live for 300 years it was built in the 1700s by an armenian merchant so if it can survive 300 years and still going strong i don't see any reason why any of these great buildings should be pulled down awesome. and bharat insurance which you i think mention as you know what is crumbling one hopes that lic will take it up the way they've done to their buildings in calcutta and elsewhere and restore it to their glory so that our children grandchildren great grandchildren know what our heritage has left for them wonderful thought one yeah. last closing yeah. line from no, yeah. architect think, nalini you know i would suggest that madras is yet to be rediscovered awesome. you know because we still in its various layers periods natural features water bodies buildings big small fat whatever they are we because we have not we don't have the judgment to say what we want we are individuals so the so the way we look at understand uh, madras will be comprehensive and with that will bring all of us together for with tomorrow with you on board with uh. you on board and uh, sujatha on board let me see whether indian institute of architects chennai center can take a large stride in this direction of discovering the innate madrasness of chennai uh, would you like to add a last line no no i just want to thank our uh, panelists and i think um, uh, i'm really hoping that we can move towards action and move towards a very positive way of making a difference in the city it could be in many small ways it doesn't have to be big grand gestures I try to do that in my practice and i think all the young architects and practicing architects present here in their own way respond to this conversation around uh, sort of protecting our built intangible and natural heritage I think it'll make a difference as a as a as a design fraternity. Thank Wonderful. Indian Institute of Architects Chennai Center has just had a lot of new um members joining in. Uh, over the last month we've had a huge rush uh migration into IIA. And <laughs> yeah, so 
with this kind of energy that's happening in the Chennai Centre, I would think with you too, Kavita, on board, I think the two of you too, I think we could be actually rediscovering Chennai, uh, the Madrasness of Chennai, the history of Chennai. And with that note, I thank all of you for having spent your time with us.